Stem cell therapy, guys. This is the future of medicine. No doubt about it. You all have heard about it, you read about it, you see it on social media, on TV, everywhere basically. Everybody talks about stem cell therapy. So let me just give you a few facts. Number one is that, in my opinion, it is absolutely the future of medicine. We are shifting now from what we call reactive medicine, where we as physicians react to certain conditions. People come to us because they have pain or they have damage of an organ or loss of function, and we react to that, towards what we call reparative or regenerative medicine, using, among other things, stem cell therapy, where we do not just react to damage, but we want to repair damage. So if someone comes with a heart attack, for example, theoretically we have the option to repair damaged heart muscle cells by injecting stem cells into the heart, for example, or into other organs, and then recreate a new tissue. If you put stem cells in a culture, for example, into the environment of heart tissue, those cells are able to develop into what we call cardiomyocytes, meaning heart muscle cells. If you inject stem cells in an eye, then they can become eye cells. If you put it in the brain, they can become brain cells and neurons in the liver hepatocytes, so liver cells. So that's all theoretically possible. And every single study which has been published using stem cells for the sake of repairing damaged tissue has shown benefits so far. But are we there yet? Actually, no. Because stem cell therapy, and this is very important to know, today is not FDA approved. It is still considered experimental, meaning it is tested in clinical trials and studies. With one exception, which is stem cell transplantation for certain forms of cancer. This has been done since 20 plus years, very successful. But that's not our topic here. Our topic is really using stem cells either from the individual's own body, often from the adipose tissue in the stomach, which, uh, where we get the stem cells through a mini liposuction, or from the bone marrow, uh, through a bone marrow biopsy. Or we use what we call an allogenic stem cells, not from ourselves, but from donors, oftentimes from umbilical cord tissue or from placenta tissue. Keep in mind what's in the umbilical cord, in the blood basically, and the placenta, these cells are able to feed and create an entire organism. So nothing is stronger than that which can create an entire new human being. So stem cells are pluripotent, meaning they have the ability to develop into any tissue. And keep in mind that their original task in our evolutional existence basically is to repair damage. So if we cut ourselves, for example, there's then stem cells migrating to the cut in the skin and they repair the wound and heal the wound in part, but there's always something missing because there's a scar and uh, the repair is not complete. Same in the heart, if someone comes with a heart attack, heart muscle cells die. And uh, the therapy we are doing nowadays is just to prevent further damage, but not repairing. But if we have the ability with stem cells, as shown in clinical trials, to repair the damage that can make a major difference, not only for the individual, but also for the outcomes, of course. We hopefully can reduce heart failure, we can reduce mortality, we definitely reduce morbidity, meaning the feeling of being sick and going to hospitals over and over again. So in this regard, everybody who's involved in the research of stem cells and stem cell therapy knows this is the way to go. And again, as I mentioned earlier, look at all the clinical trials and, and studies. So every single study which has been ever published, whether it's for conditions of the heart, of the blood vessels, of the liver, of brain diseases like Parkinson's, dementia, or ALS, has shown some benefits. Stem cells, as they are used right now in the clinical 
setting in trials, again, this is experimental. Some people do it outside clinical trials, but again, that's not FDA approved, but it is basically used for two groups of conditions. Number one are acute injuries. So if you have a football player, for example, and he has uh, horrible pain in the knee because there's an acute arthritis caused by long-term damage in the joint, oftentimes, and we have heard that from NBA players for years, they went to Germany or other places in the world to get stem cell injections, and less than a month later, they were back on the field playing. Why? Because there is anti-inflammatory effects of the stem cell. So that does work. So besides the acute injuries, of course, we have the chronic, especially the chronic degenerative conditions, meaning the joint and muscle wear and tear, the wear and tear of the heart, of the brain, of the skin. Many people come to us even for injections into the face because the stem cells rejuvenate the superficial layers of the dermis of the skin and people look refreshed and younger. It does work, no doubt about it. And of course, the question is, how do those stem cells work? What do they do, basically? So there are three to four different aspects to keep in mind. And let me briefly explain. Number one is stem cells are anti-inflammatory, which plays a major role in, in acute injuries, but also in chronic degenerative diseases of the brain or the heart or others. So they reduce the inflammation, which is caused by damage. Number two, they are angiogenetic, meaning they have to, the ability to create new blood vessels, capillaries, arterioles, so the smaller blood vessels. And by creating new blood vessels, the circulation, meaning the perfusion of the tissue is improved. So if there's more oxygen delivered to the damaged or injured tissue through improved circulation, that leads to healing processes. Makes sense, right? Number three is the regeneration or reparation of damaged tissue. And there's different opinions. Uh, some people believe that there is no really regeneration, but the stem cells just stabilize and, and uh, improve the healthy tissue surrounding the damage. Others strongly believe that stem cells, yeah, they do regenerate because they develop into the cells in the damaged environment and by thus take over the lost function. And the next point is that stem cells might have the ability to stimulate our own stem cell production, even if we give them exogenously, meaning intravenously or in one organ system or into a joint as an injection, basically. So what are the risks? There's not many. Everything has a risk. Don't misunderstand me. but. What we know so far, of course, there's always a risk of an injection, pain, um, local inflammation. Uh, it could be an infection, of course, if it's unclean materials, but these are minimal risks. The uh, main risk is, of course, that something might happen which we don't know. For example, some people believe if you inject stem cells and you have underlying cancer, that those cancer cells can explode, basically, and you make the cancer worse. That's not quite clear whether this is true or not. I personally think the books are not closed there. If someone has an active cancer, I personally would not use stem cells for any other condition then because I'm quite, just not quite sure what might happen and you don't want to risk anything. But other than that, the risks are basically minimal, minimal. It might not work, of course. If you look at different conditions from hair loss to sexual dysfunction to wound healing of non-healing ulcers, again, every single study has shown benefits. We have done several studies in patients, for example, with sexual dysfunction, rectal dysfunction, with significant improvements of the circulation and the uh, ability to basically have a satisfying intercourse in men who could not have done that before the stem cell injections. Furthermore, we have done several observational studies where we injected stem cells in the legs of people with diabetes who had significant circulation problems and non-healing ulcers, and they all healed basically by no other means 
was that possible before. So it is really, really astonishing. But again, stem cell therapy is not yet FDA approved. Why? Because there is still a significant lack of data. We still need large scale controlled clinical trial data because there's a lot of unanswered questions. We don't know exactly what type of stem cell is the best one for which condition. We don't know exactly what's the number of stem cells we need to inject into an uh, injured joint, for example. We don't know how often do we need to do it. Is it once every six months, once a year, once every two years? We and others have different protocols. So for many conditions, we in our protocol, in our study protocols, we do it once a year and we do very simple testings before and after to see if there's any, any benefits, of course. The number one issue is, of course, you want to make sure there is no harm. And number two is you want to improve quality of life. And that can be easily measured by certain means which are scientifically accepted. And by thus, once we have a certain number of patients, then of course we do a statistical analysis and then we uh, hopefully publish those papers as we have done recently with two papers using stem cells for erectile dysfunction. We even have done recently a COVID study, very sick patients, pilot phase, small numbers, but in favor of those receiving stem cells. So there is a, a huge future for the use of stem cell therapy. Um, the issue is of course, not many people know about it. I'll give you an example. So if you do an internet search on, let's say, stem cell therapy for something like erectile dysfunction. So what do you get? Within 0.2 seconds, you get like 50 million hits. It's amazing. But if you look at those hits, what is it? It's basically pure marketing and advertising. Nothing else, there's no scientific data. We analyzed what has really been published using stem cells on erectile dysfunction and the total number of patients that has been published as of last year was actually less than 100. So we published a paper on that looking at those data and then we did our own study. So now it's of course more and we had the largest patient number ever studied using stem cells for erectile dysfunction. But the vast majority of what you see on the web is advertising. It's not based on clinical trial data, not based on science or research. It is pure advertising and sometimes combined with false claims of cures of diseases. We have not cured any disease with stem cells yet. I just published this book here behind me, The Secret World of Stem Cell Therapy, which is available, of course, on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble and other websites can order it um, where we really outline what is really known and what are the issues with stem cell therapy and what you as a potential patient and consumer should ask your physician or the healthcare provider who might or might not offer you stem cell therapies. You really have to look behind what is their reputation, where do the cells come from and what is really their clinical data. There's a huge potential but still a lot of, a lot of open questions. More to come. Thank you very much for your attention.